Welcome back to the Wind Waker walkthrough. Last video I completed the Forbidden Woods and I am here to do a lot of side quests. This video will consist of only side quests. It is 100% optional. So if you just wish to go to the main story then skip to the next video or to the next couple of videos because I may spend a couple of videos doing side quests but these here that I want to do are for heart pieces, treasure charts, as well as anything else I can find along the way. So uh, exploration indeed is going to happen here, but just bear with me, a few things to do if you really want to complete this game 100%, there's quite a bit for us to do here. Alright, I'm just using these uh, Deku flowers to get some altitude for myself. As well, if you were low on magic during the end of the Forbidden Woods, you can just sit in these and they will restore your magic. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to go back to this ledge here, but I'm not going back into the Forbidden Woods. No, I am actually going to a different ledge somewhere else. Okay, you should definitely be familiar with this by now, I'm sure. So this is me looking around for it. Uh, you can always use the mini-map to help you. Uh, I flew to that ledge over there, here. This one right here. So you want to change the direction of the wind to the north, I believe. I was off camera and I was trying to get back and forth from place, or to the southeast. And it's conveniently already placed there, but I did it anyway just to make it look like that I confirmed it and that is what you want. So the wind should be blowing southeast. Yeah, almost the opposite from north. <laughs> Sorry about that. And you can go ahead and just glide out here it may not look like you have enough magic to get you there, but rest assured you do, I promise. You have maybe just barely enough, but here it is. There's a treasure chest right here, so go ahead and claim your prize. It's a treasure chart, so I'll be showing you what that is later on. Now, I guess I could have gotten this before I started the Forbidden Woods. But I just didn't want to have to climb up the outside of the uh, Forest Haven again. Even though that's essentially, I do it twice in this video just because of shore stupidity here. Because here, I was trying to change the direction of the wind to the north, or no, to the west, so that I could just... Oh no, yeah, it was to the north. I had to change the wind to the north here. And then I jumped and I realized oh, I didn't even press the right button to pull out the deck relief here. So I essentially wasted a, a lot of energy. So I jumped oh, after cutting these trees down because I wanted to fill my magic. So I jumped and I kept pressing Z. And I don't understand how I still was pressing Z when I never assigned my deck relief there. I always keep the Wind Waker on Z and occasionally I'll put something else on Z. But for 90% of the time, the Wind Waker is on Z. And as you can see, I almost drowned here, but I was luckily able to get into Beetle's shop. Uh, I did want to stop here too, by the way, just to pick up some more all-purpose bait. Uh, I may have only used three of them, but uh, it's fine. Hey, this is a Hyoi pair. I'd say now would be a good time to pick up maybe one or two of these things. Because later on, you're going to need to use them. And what this does is it allows you to control a, a seagull. And it can collect stuff for you as well as... Uh, it can't attack, but it can activate crystal switches. So definitely pick up a couple of them. And I wanted to get some all-purpose bait. So Bye. that's really all I want here. And I did this just to check how much I have. What I have right there is a good amount. I'm pretty comfortable with that, so I'm gonna keep it all there for now. All right, and what's nice about exiting Beetle's shop is it takes you to the front of the Forest Haven, which is great. Also, this mailbox here is uh, moving in a very strange manner. If you check it, then you'll see that it actually has mail for you. Now, this is a system within this game that I say it's very unique, unlike to previous Zelda games before this, is that 
Link gets mail in this game, and you can send him letters as well as, or people send you letters as well as other items inside of here, which this item does contain one thing here. A piece of heart, so yeah, definitely pick up this if you want more health, you know. All right, so that's nice. Now I wanted to climb back into the forest haven to see what that other island was, although it wasn't anything necessary that I have to do now, and but I will still show you what it is, and I'll talk to you about it more whenever I get there. Uh, I really, I gotta say, I love the one-hit kills with the Boko Babas now. I almost said Deku Baba, but it's because in every other game they're called that. Anyway, uh, you don't really have to do this. I guess you can just skip a couple minutes ahead, and uh, I just barely avoided that Octorok there. Uh, back to that whole mail thing. It's interesting how they, this game sort of invented that mechanic, and then they utilized it in Twilight Princess. You know, we had the postman, that crazy guy that runs around. Uh, I have a whole playthrough of Twilight Princess on my YouTube channel. I might make a precise walkthrough of it later on. I might not. It depends. I want to keep it all to this right now. But it's still cool seeing this mechanic manipulated and in action again five years later after this game came out. Now, in Majora's Mask, there was a postman and... Well, he did send letters, but not necessarily to you. He was just kind of a character who had his own side quests and did his things. But no, in this game, the Rito Postman is in charge of sending the letters. And you can get them at any mailbox on any island, which is pretty awesome. I don't know how that essentially works. You, you could seriously like wait until you're back at Windfall and then pick up that piece of heart I got there. Or you can pick up more than one letter at a time. It's pretty cool. Ocarina of Time had the Running Man, except he was just kind of a crazy guy. He didn't really have his own side quest. Well, he did have his own side quest, but it was just kind of rhetorical and out of the way. It, wasn't really for anything. It was just if you could beat his time and you can't even, he'll always beat you by a second anyway, so it just seems like that they had no idea what they were utilizing there. Anyway, once I come out here again, and again, you don't have to do this uh, at all, actually, but that island up there, I say is one very interesting thing that not only Zelda series started, but the whole Nintendo franchise started. Uh, I already have the wind direction changed. I forgot why, and I remember that it's because I did it back on the other island. Anyway, this island here houses a shelter inside of it. Um, it's known as the Nintendo Gallery, and it's this really long side quest where you have to collect figurines or you have to take pictures and make them into figurines. I'm not sure how I did it. Uh, not sure how it's done, but I will not be covering that in this game. I don't consider that part of 100%. It has nothing to do with the story at all. It has nothing to do with strength or growth, and I was trying to get on that letter to see what's there, but it's really nothing, so I was just... Oh, again, it's really out of your way. So I just try to win my luck and swim somewhere that I knew would be safe. And thankfully, you should have enough stamina to reach the main part of the island here. Uh, again, completely unnecessary, but still a cool concept. If you want to know how to complete the Nintendo Gallery, then you'll have to look it up in a previous video because... I will not be covering it at all. And, alright, enough of all that, just interesting facts and things about the other games. It's go ahead, and it's time to sail now, and I needed my map for reference. You want to go ahead and go south. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea right now. We've got treasure charts to get, heart pieces, 
and by that I mean like a treasure chart, a piece of heart, as well as information to fill out on my my C chart as well. So if you did not purchase that bait from earlier, go ahead and do so as you will need quite a bit of it right now. This guy right here, the fish, he's ready for me. And he will give me information regarding the Forest Haven. Although I literally did a dungeon here and side quests as well, you still have to do the map here. Even though for Windfall I didn't have to do it and for the Forsaken Fortress and for Outset you didn't have to do it. But I'm assuming that that's just because that for Outset, I mean it was Link's home his whole life so I'm pretty sure he knows Outset Island. <laughs> And as well as the Forsaken Fortress, I think the game didn't want to throw you off too much at the beginning. So they're being generous to give you a map from the start. But this, I think it's a nice way of uh, showing you what to do. So there's the map right there, the Forest Haven. And it only shows the main forest side. It doesn't show you the Forbidden Woods, which I find weird. Because it's, it, it's clearly there, but it's just not being shown. Even if you go there, it's only like... It's cut out halfway, so I do that. Awful lot of sailing here, but well, I thought that fast forwarding it in the previous video was a bit too fast, made it a bit harder to follow, so I might fast forward every now and then, I might refrain from that. Uh, this time I'm just going to not and see how it goes. Uh, I just want to go straight to the south over here. Oh, and I didn't mention this yet. You can press the, sh the right shoulder button and your boat will jump. It's not actually for anything except I think this one instance of the game where you have to use it. But other than that, it's just a cool mechanic. Seems sort of gimmicky, but it's, I think it's kind of cool mechanic because, you know, a boat can't jump, you know, it's... This is not something you see. Now, I was trying to find that fish guy again. So you're probably wondering why it took me so long. I found him here, but keep in mind the wind is still going to the north. So, I mean to the south. So, that's why your my boat was going pretty slowly. Anyway, here he is again. And he's got more information for me now. So, and as I said before, you can... Keep feeding him all-purpose bait in the same island region, the same square on your map, and he will retell you the information that you want to hear. Uh, you don't ever have to do it. I've never done it. I've only just gotten all the information and then just basically never spoke to him again. <laughs> but honestly, you can do it if you want, just so that you can, I don't know, get better information or memorize all the text in this game. But Anyway, that'll be it for him here. This is the boating course. And there is a secret grotto here that I'm after. Now it's a very, it's a little unclear as to where you're supposed to get off here, but there's a slope part right here and I passed it, but you just want to go ahead and hold down the right shoulder button to cruise. And I just, it would be helpful to equip the Deku Leaf here as well, as you will need it to get this grotto. And then just get off here. Again, it's pretty unclear as to where you're supposed to get off, but just look for that slope. Alright, I was trying to cut this grass to see if I could get magic, but doesn't seem to look like it, so no magic for me then. All right, what would be a good idea here is that you want to change the direction of the wind. Go ahead and make it blow to the north. Okay. And, oh, it's raining. I think this is the first time I've seen rain in this uh, playthrough. Also, I just barely ran out of magic to do that, so if you don't have enough magic, you may have to go back to the Forest Haven and refill it. <laughs> so, that's always great. Uh, there were barrels there, so I'm not sure if you can smash barrels to get magic. Okay, 
This right here, there are a few of these. Anyway, this is a new enemy. You may have seen them in the Forsaken Fortress if you wandered around a bit. These are mini blends and they make this really irritating sound. And so what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to hit those three switches and then leave. They're probably just blindly fighting all these enemies without any knowledge of it. These mini blends do not stop coming at all. They will just keep coming and coming and coming and coming until... Well, no until. They just, they won't stop. And I was getting pretty frustrated with these things. So I was trying to pick up that magic jar right there. Because they will not stop coming here. So, and look, I completely missed the opportunity. Now, I really don't like this, but I still think it's clever at the same time. I think it's clever when I see it, but when I have to actually do it myself, I don't like it. <laughs> no. Because it's, it's just hard because you can't let your guard down too much, but it takes a lot of concentration to use the boomerang. So, especially on the GameCube version, which is what I'm doing, and if you're playing on the HD version, then you can just tilt the Wii U gamepad. Anyway, I managed to do it in a reasonable amount of time. But yes, even after you hit all the switches, the mini blends will still keep coming, and nothing will stop that. I was trying to get that heart, even though I missed it. Yeah. If you're good at the quick spin, this would be a good place to use it. Just saying. Look at that. Alright, open this chest, and claim your prize. It's the submarine chart. I don't know why it doesn't say THE submarine chart, because there's, there's only one. So if you remember before I came to the Forest Haven, two videos ago, then you should know that I visited a submarine. And if you didn't do that, just go check out my... Uh, just check out part six of this walkthrough. As I visited a submarine, and I killed a bunch of Bokoblins, and I got an empty bottle from it. If you didn't do that, check out part six so that you can see that. All right, I'm done here, and the King of Red Limes will most likely be in a different spot whenever you leave. Matter of fact, he will. Okay, now it would be a good idea to go to the east. So you can change the direction of the wind to go east or northeast. I think I just went to the east. Yes, I did. Okay. And I didn't equip the sail. There's really an instance where you need, like, three or four different items equipped at once. Even though you can't even have four items equipped in this game. Now, Twilight Princess on the GameCube only allows you two. Alright, this thing right here, this is a, um... This is also a pea hat But it's the larger kind that you find in the ocean. And they are some annoying things, let me tell you what. These things will hit you, and they hate Australian weaponry, so the boomerang is the best way to fight them. But they are really irritating. <clears throat> and they will knock you out of your boat. Only in the GameCube version they will do that. In the HD version on the Wii U, they will not knock you out of your boat. You will certainly fall over, but you will not fall out of the boat in the HD version. Which I find interesting that they utilize that. Um, there's just quite a few mechanics about the original GameCube that... It just really makes you remember that, yeah, I remember I had to deal with like actually falling out. And like, everyone who plays just the new versions doesn't even have the GameCube version. It's like, you're glad that there are all these changes, but you remember the struggle, honestly. Alright, this right here... I believe this is... Five Star Isles? Maybe? I'm not too familiar with the names of all 49 of these islands in this game. It seems a lot to me, but... It's really not. Um, 49... I don't think it's too bad, it's just some of these names are a bit redundant and a little unnecessary. Anyway, here I am filling out my uh, C chart again. I think it's Five Star Isles, yeah. 
positively sure that's what this is. Uh, there's nothing here for me to do right now. I just thought that I'd get this information filled out so that I can fill out all of my sea chart. Because as I said, I'll show you all 49 of these islands and how to fill them out and where you need to go. You just gotta find the fish. But I want to do quite a bit of side quests before I actually get to the next dungeon. So this video as well as the next video will be side quest, maybe. Maybe some of the next video will be part of the main quest, but I'd say if you don't want to do this, you can just skip to the main quest. And I was trying to look on my map where I was going. Alright, I need to change the direction of the wind to the north now. And going north will allow me to reach another island up ahead. Uh, it's quite a bit of a ways away, so you can sit back and relax, or you can skip 30 seconds, or 40 seconds, maybe. But if not, you can just hear me talk about whatever that has no point to it. There is, ah yes, there is a, uh, a submarine here that I passed by right now. I came back and got it like a few minutes after realizing I skipped it, but that submarine up ahead there is where you're going to want to head to. Or, it's not a submarine, but there's a submarine back... No, it is in this sector. Uh, this is the island that I want to head to. Gosh, I'm all over the place. The submarine is to my right there. So, you can find it there. But anyway, here is the fish guy again. And these squares, they seem pretty big, but they're not too big. I mean, the ship, or the King of Red Lions travels really fast as a sailboat, but, oh, I mean, sailboats can travel, obviously, a lot faster than a ship, just because of the difference in size, of course. Anyway, here's the information for this island here which is Cliff Plateau Isles, which is, uh, sounds like a sixth grader named. I mean, honestly, it just, it's just three plural nouns is what it is essentially, but there is a secret grotto here, and there is a, it's either a piece of heart or a sea chart, or a treasure, I think it's a treasure chart, but I will be getting it. Alright, you may have to change the direction of your wind to get here, you may not. Uh, I didn't have to, thankfully, so that was nice. And, oh yes, that, that is a shark. Or, I don't think it's actually called a shark, I believe this game made a creative name for it, but for the sake of it, a shark it is. Because I don't live in this game, I live in the real world. <laughs> Alright, now these right here, Cliff Plateau Isles, you can just jump across them, you shouldn't have to hop. There's a mailbox here, if you didn't get the mail at, that I got at the beginning of this video, then you can get it right now. But if you didn't, then you can just wait until you reach another mailbox. Or if you didn't get it, then well, you should get it, because it's got a piece of heart in there, and I'm sure you want one, right? Anyway, this is a very interesting grotto, grotto in this game. It's got these weird looking platforms of wood that have these planks out, seemingly remind you of totems. I wonder if the forest temple from Twilight Princess took its inspiration off of this. Because that's just what I think of when I'm in here. I just think of the forest temple from Twilight Princess. Even though it wasn't out yet when this game was released, but still my point stands. I believe that this is where you utilize it from, just because of the the Boko Babas and here and the plant-like things. 
I was trying to... Well, I was trying to see if I could fight that Boko Baba on the other side of these vines. But I wasn't able to, so... Anyway. Now you kill that one and it becomes a Deku flower. Now this is a really cool mechanic. So you can light this Deku stick here and you can jump in here and it will stay lit as you're up here. Now I wasn't sure how to get across, but you can just jump. Even though it looks a little far of a jump, you can make it. And then you throw it there. Yeah. And once you're done, you can just glide. And then there will be... Well, you can get out from this magical beam of light. Alright, over here, a bit higher, is a Korok and one of the trees it planted. Alright, here is a treasure chart. Perfectly fine. Now, I haven't actually gotten into what these things are all about because I will be showing you what they are a treasure chart shows you a piece of buried treasure in that specific square and all of the islands have them or at least almost all of them have them and well every island has a piece of buried treasure in it somewhere and you use the grappling hook to fetch it out I completely disregard mentioning that. You may have gotten it on the way, you may have tested it out and see, seen what it does, but anytime you're in the boat, you can use the grappling hook as a claw to fetch treasure that's on the bottom of the ocean. It can bring it up, and surprisingly, it's always in a treasure chest. Anyway, you didn't actually have to talk to that Korok, pretty sure. Uh, he was just there. And he tells you that the trees that they planted usually grow no problem, but this one was failing. Here's a new enemy, a Blue Choo Choo. I don't know why it wasn't coming out whenever I was up here already. And it drops Blue Choo Jelly. It's just a blue colored Choo Jelly, just like the green one and the red one that I've collected. And that shows us three of five different Choo Choo species that are in this game. So there are two more for us to discover. That's pretty cool. And the blue ones, you may not or may not have noticed, it can electrocute you, so keep that in mind. I wanted to see if I could find my boat, but then realized, wait, if I just jump, I can find it, right? And I can just swim, because this is a pretty small island. So yeah. That's it for Cliff Plateau Isles. Now I want to swim southeast. Okay, but here are the charts. So, since I've collected them in such a way, they're out of order. And here's the submarine chart. It is to the south. It is to the south, and you can just well, of course, use the Wind Waker and the sail to get there. Now, there are quite a few of these s submarines, and it just shows you where they are in each square. It's very easy to figure out where they are. It just tells you where they are on the entire map. But it's not specific about where in the square they are. It just shows you that there is a treasure or there is a submarine in this square. There isn't one in this square, but there is one in this square. You gotta do a little bit of looking around yourself. And it started raining, isn't that just nice? I was looking around to see if there's anything there. Yeah, the sun is setting. And the rain stopped. Okay. So you can view any of the other charts if you so desire. But that is for later. Alright, I don't think that was the uh, submarine. Matter of fact, there it is, over there in the distance. 
You can see on the top left side of the screen. Well, now, directly ahead of me, that's where it is. You can change one if you want, if you want to sail a bit faster, but I think by the time it would take you to... By the time it would take you to conduct the song and then equip the sail, probably already just be over there in the first place. Uh, these submarines... Cool mechanic in this game, not necessarily dungeons, just mini dungeons with a trial inside usually. So far all I've had to do is just kill a bunch of enemies and, well, that's actually what I have to do here as well, just kill a bunch of enemies. There are these rafts out here as well, they just have very sleepy Boca Blends on them. Yeah, they're not really part of anything, they can just... You can fight them if you want, they can give you rupees, but if you're like me, you probably have a lot of rupees. Alright, it's pretty dark in here. Uh, that actually doesn't have significance to the fighting. However, keep in mind though, there are keys in here. So you want to kill them off as quick as you can, because they can fly in through the torches and become fire keys. So, I guess that was the significance of the torches, to show that there are keys in here. And they can become fire keys if you're a bit slow with fighting them. One thing I wish that Zelda games utilized is that you can attack enemies while they're down. Now, in Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, you can do a fatal blow on them. But, of course, that was after this game. I guess that was after they realized, you know, we really should do something about that. Um, anyway... Up here is a treasure chest, and I'm going to conclude this video after this. It was just some side questing. I'm going to be doing some more side quests in the next episode, so you, I may get back to the main quest in the second half of the episode. I really won't know for sure until it's uploaded, but all I do know is that here is a piece of heart, and... I sure hope this video was informative uh, for you as it was for me. Anyway, that concludes this video here, so join me in the next video where I will be doing more side quests and possibly getting back to the main story.